Welcome to the Creative Process, Collection 2, Episode 2, Hair Metal, Fixing the Mistakes. Today, we're going to go back through our multi-tracks, find the mistakes, and decide which ones to fix and which ones to leave alone. But first, coffee. Mmm, coffee. The sections in today's video are them be the rules. In this section, we'll go over my personal rules for fixing the mistakes. To fix or not to fix. This is where we decide what to fix and what to leave alone. Listen for the payback. When we're all done fixing the mistakes, we're gonna go through and critically listen to the track one time just to make sure we didn't miss it. Damn beta rules. So I have five rules for fixing the mistakes. Rule number one, start with whole grain. What I mean by this is I listen to the whole track in context, actively paying attention, listening to see if I hear any mistakes, anything that needs to be fixed. At this point, I'm not writing any mistakes down, I'm just listening for them. Rule number two, mistake includes take. After listening to the whole track once and getting the context of the song fresh in my mind, I'm going to go through and solo each separate performance on each instrument and listen to that performance for mistakes pulled out of the context of the song. This makes it a lot easier to hear the mistakes on the individual instruments. Do you have any straws? What do you need a straw for? To stir the sugar into my coffee. Just use a spoon. That doesn't work, right? Wait a minute. You're not going to snort my sugar. What about flour? Can I snort the flour? Basically, I want to stick to a take. So I'm going to listen to the whole drum kit and not the individual drums. With the bass, I recorded three separate performances, so I need to listen to each performance. With the electric guitar, I recorded two performances, so even ah, though I shoot. have eight tracks, I'm only going to listen to four of those tracks and then the other four of those tracks because four tracks is one performance. If I made a mistake during the performance, it's on all four tracks. Rule number four, don't fix just to fix. What I mean by this is a mistake should only be fixed if it distracts the listener from the song. A lot of times a mistake that doesn't distract the listener actually adds interest to the song. It makes the song more interesting. It makes the song more fun to listen to. Everything needs context. When I'm deciding whether or not to fix a mistake, especially one that I didn't hear until I soloed that performance, I'm going to go back and listen to that mistake in the context of the whole recording so I can decide whether to fix it or leave it alone. I need that context in order to know whether it's distracting or not. No fix a flat allowed. When you're fixing a mistake, fix it right. I don't care what it takes to fix it right. When I was first embarking on the process of fixing the mistakes in this song, The beginning of the first verse was incredibly loose. Everybody started playing at a different time. I tried to fix it for about two hours before I decided the only way to fix this was to go back and re-record the bass and the guitar. All three takes on the bass, both takes on the electric guitar, just re-record the whole song and fix it properly. A lot of times if you fix the mistake right, you'll spend less time in the long run than you would by trying to fix it the easy way. Mm -hmm. 
that being said, if the easy way works, do it. If you can just grab a bass drum hit from another part of the song and paste it in there and it sounds fine, do it. But if it doesn't work, throw it away and re-record it. Don't just keep trying to fix it with a Band-Aid. If you do that, you're gonna have a mistake that you can't stop hearing no matter what. You're gonna be in there twiddling and trying to fix the entire rest of the process of mixing this song. And at the end of the day, you're gonna end up with a piece of the song that the listener hears every time. The listener's gonna hear that mistake every time. So just fix it right. Which is why I re-recorded. What do you mean you? The bass and electric guitars for this song. To fix or not to fix? I've already gone through, done all the pre-listening, and cataloged the mistakes that I found. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into the track, we're gonna listen to each mistake in context, and then we're gonna decide whether we wanna fix it, leave it alone, or re-examine it later. Let's get started. The first mistake is measure eight beat four. The crash is early and the kick and the snare flam. Let's give it a listen. Yeah, that's pretty bad, and the drums are the only thing playing there, so that's really, that's got to be fixed. So where I want to go to look for that is the chorus, because I'm actually playing the chorus beat. So we want to take all the drum tracks, copy the selected area of items, back to the mistake we're trying to fix, listen in context helps if I put it over the right hit Mistake fixed. The next mistake we want to look at is on measure 22, beat 4. The kick drum is really soft. Here's the drums by themselves. Did you hear how soft that was? Here they are in the whole mix. Yeah, you pretty much can't even hear that hit in the mix, so we're going to fix that one pretty easy we just grab another kick we're gonna take this one right here I can tell by looking at the waveform it's nice and big take all the drum mics copy the selected area fixed. The next one we want to take a look at is out here on measure 40 beat 3, the kick and the snare flam. Let's listen to the drums by themselves. Did you hear that? The snare hit a little bit after the bass. Now let's listen to it in the whole mix. I think I'm going to leave that. The snare and the cymbal go off together. I kind of like the bass leading into it. Yeah, we're going to leave that one alone. The next one we're going to look at is measure 43, beat 3, guitar 2 misses a note of the run. Let's hear just the guitar. Pretty obvious. Everything I play or don't play is exactly how the song is supposed to be. Everybody else plays and you don't. Then everybody else messed up. Fix them. Musicians, 
taking egocentrism to new heights since 1412. Now let's listen to it in the mix. On speakers, I don't know how obvious it would be, but in the headphones, it stands out like a nightmare. Let's listen again. Yeah, like everything, it just disappears out of one ear, so we're going to fix that. So we're going to take this piece right here, all the guitar tracks, well, this particular guitar anyway. fading right let's listen to just that instrument the next mistake we're going to look at is out here on measure 78 beat 1 the P bass slides into the note pretty subtle. Let's hear how it sounds in the mix. I can't hear that when I listen to it in the whole mix, so I'm not going to fix it right now. But remember, I haven't gotten the tone for the bass yet. I have the three different takes on the bass, each with a different pickup, because I'm not sure which I want to use in the final mix. So I'm going to leave this alone for now, but I'm going to come back and double check this after I get the bass tone. At that point, it might become more obvious and need to be fixed. The next mistake we want to take a look at is out here at measure 90. On the Jazzmaster pickup take, I was really sloppy on the run. Let's give it a listen soloed. Yeah, that was pretty bad. Now let's give it a listen in the mix. In the mix, it's not so bad. I'm going to leave it alone for now. I'm going to come back and look at it again after getting the bass tone. The next mistake we want to look at is still the bass. Now with both pickups on, out here at measure 107, he just completely blows this run at the end of the chorus riff. Let's give it a listen. That's pretty bad. Let's hear it in the mix. Even with him way back in the background, I can still hear that. Yeah, we'll take that one. Now it's time to listen for the payback. Let's listen to the whole song and see if we got anything, see if anything jumps out at us.
I didn't hear anything stand out at me. Some parts sound a little thin, but it's not an individual instrument, and it's actually by design, because remember, we have some accoutrements to add yet. Nothing's too thin. Everything where I'm not playing is too thin. Take it all out. Seriously? Yeah, if I'm not playing, who cares? You're just one piece of the puzzle. I am the puzzle. You're just one piece of the puzzle. Now you sound like my mom. Nothing was too thick. It just sounded good. So what do you think? Sounding like hair metal yet? Let me know in the comments. Come back next week when we get the drum tone. I think it'll start sounding a lot more like hair metal once those drums start to sound like a wall of cannons. Don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel, ring that bell so I can let you know next time I'm uploading a video. Until next time, stay happy, stay healthy, and God bless. Have a great week, everybody.